Yes, hello friends, welcome to the talk. So, as you know, many people have been like, uh, since Java 19 had a virtual threads as a preview feature, so many people have been like, yeah, go for virtual threads, virtual threads are very nice, and so on. And uh, people were showing uh, like demos like this, myself alike. So, how does it work? I, as you can see, I have some virtual threads, right? And I will try to uh, make them uh, so, uh, like do something or work on something, right? So, let me run this uh, demo. And as you can see, I was able to run a uh, thousand uh, threads, right? And then on this machine, I let's uh, say I try to run 10,000 uh, threads. Uh, let me rerun it again and kaboom, it doesn't work, right? And it says possibly out of memory or process resource limits reached, right? Which means I cannot create any more threads like regular threads. And here where they start telling you go for virtual threads because now what you can do is basically this. Uh, where you create a thread, just instead of creating good old platform threads as we know them, uh, go and create one of the uh, virtual threads, right? And uh, from, uh, from there, the, the, this code should be working, right? So as you can see, I created like uh, 10,000 virtual threads. Uh, since I'm working for like two seconds, the overhead was quite small. And then maybe we can go even better, even further, let's say for one million virtual threads, right? And as you can see, I was able on this just, you know, desktop workstation, create one million virtual threads. And the whole thing around was just 2.7 seconds. So we might say, amazing, right? It's just what they don't show you during these demos, or I, I, I've made a hint for you here, is this emulate workforce. So I'm not really working, I'm emulating that I'm working uh, for these two seconds. So see, maybe instead of this sneaky sleep, which is just thread sleep, and by the way, if you see such code in production, it means something somewhere went wrong, okay? And a kitten is dying, so please don't do this in production code. This is maybe not even a good idea for a test code. Anyway, so now instead of going for this thing, maybe I shall go, shall go for like a proper uh, uh, hard work, right? Which is like a proper CPU uh, bounded work. And now when I rerun this, uh, did I rerun this? No, I went for, <laughs> for search and replace. Sorry, I'm so clumsy with this keyboard. Um, now I started one million virtual threads, but each of them is taking like really two seconds and then it's and more and more and more. So if I left it like this, I'm not sure if we, would, if we had finished this demo by uh, the end of this conference. Maybe we would, maybe we wouldn't. I didn't do the math. So as you can see, this is how you can misuse or, as I say, butcher virtual threats, right? So, I mean, I hope no guts would be flying, but we'll be doing some experiments today. So please let me remind you that we should have this scientific mindset, right? Which requires the lab coat and uh, there's a mandatory pencil, uh, maybe, sorry, or pen, maybe even two, uh, right? So with this proper scientific mindset, we'll try to butcher or misuse virtual threads. Why should we be doing this? Because, okay, who's been working with, uh, who has Java 22 in production? Nice, Java 21. Okay, not bad. Uh, 17. Getting, okay, 11. Eight. Below eight. Okay, no hands, people are just, mm, okay, yeah. So we've been there, we've been doing migrations, right? We've migrated to lambdas. Before that, we've migrated to generics, right? Then we migrated our switcher, and now they want us to migrate to virtual threads again. So you came here to this session for this practical knowledge, how to demonstrate how, I mean, miserable technology these virtual threads are, right? You just show it to your boss, scrum master, product owner, leader, whoever, and then you have job safety for another like 10 years or so because you'll be generating a good old reactive, co sorry, uh, like a good old code basically. Um, yes, uh, welcome to this session, Butcher of Virtual Threads Like a Pro. Um, as uh, Mitya introduced me, uh, I'm Piotr Przybył, I come from uh, Poland, these are my uh, social media links if you fancy to follow me. I work for Elastic as a uh, developer advocate, which means I have here for you some Elastic stickers if you fancy to grab some, don't hesitate, go, come and grab some uh, stickers. Uh, I also work as, uh, sorry, I also work, I also am Java champion, test containers, community champion, uh, Oracle Ace and so on, and when I have time, 
uh, and I, I guess some people still uh, like to read something, I publish stuff on my personal blog page called softwaregarden.dev because I entitle myself being uh, predominantly a software gardener. Who are you? I mean, we already know what Java versions you're using, but who's a Java developer? Okay, cool. Who's JVM but not Java developer? Kotlin, Scala, Groovy, Clojure. Okay. Who's doing Kotlin to zero? One guy over there. Okay, one guy. Both hands. Okay, three hands. Okay, cool. Uh, who's not a developer? Oh, only developers in the room. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, little warning. Okay. Um, First, when I'm stressed, and trust me, I'm stressed because I'm first time in Sofia, right? When I'm stressed, I can say um, funny things, meaning that like there was something wrong in the connection between my brain and my, my tongue, right? The other thing, because just I'm a human, the other thing, some of the things I will be showing you today are still preview features, which means if you're watching this on YouTube, you should be doing two things. First, hit the subscribe button. Second, don't trust this talk ultimately. Um, yes, uh, because it's a human thing to make mistakes. So virtual threats coming from Project Loom, right? And people say, is this the biggest change since Project Lambda? And we have been asking this uh, question ourselves to ourselves, and some people uh, say, oh, um, no, uh, this is the biggest change since introduction of the Lambda, and some other people say, <coughs> that's not true. It's even bigger change than introduction uh, of Lambda to uh, Java 8. It's up to you to answer this question if it's so important or not. I will leave you with, uh, without answer for this question, but the question exists. So here we are with virtual threads, which are standard feature of Java 29 and this JEP. And these JEPs are nice, nice things to, to read, right? And DM like your friends uh, with the links to these JEPs uh, so we can discuss them in your like uh, cafes or clubs. Another thing is structured concurrency, which will touch as this JEP it was, is still a preview feature in Java 22. Uh, and as far as I remember, Java 23 and scope values also a preview feature. Okay, so virtual threads in a nutshell, because fun fact, this talk is not about virtual threads, okay? Meaning I will not deep dive and show you how they work. I mean, what are the best scenarios and so on, right? This is what other people are doing or what I'm also doing in my other talks. This talk is about misusing virtual threads, mind you, right? How to butcher them properly okay so but this is like one slide so we have something how they work so they're great for IO and waiting not necessarily for every task you have in your Java program keep that in mind okay uh, that's why this demo was shining with one million virtual threads because the only thing they were doing was sleeping for two seconds there is no way to switch them on and off globally in JDK there is no dash X or dash D flag or like system property or anything you can't, you just have to go into places and change this. And perhaps this is like the most shocking thing to many people. They don't make your apps faster, but scale better. Okay, uh, we'll get to that maybe, uh, because how they work in a nutshell is they work like a, like a cars in a, in, a, in a city. Who knows the concept of a traffic jam in a city? Okay, the other people are just like commuting using bicycle or something like you. Yes, so let's say that a regular thread is like your car that you have, that you possess because you bought it, right? And then let's say when you want to come here, you, there is a traffic jam, and then when you're sitting here and enjoying this lovely conference, uh, your cars are there somewhere in the parking lots and the occupying space and so on. And nobody else can, can use them because, fun fact, you have the keys with you, right? And the concept of virtual threads is like, you need to move from point A to point B, let's say from your home to this lovely conference, and then instead of your private car, you're using uh, like a taxi or uh, like, a, like sh car sharing or whatever, right? There, there was no Uber in, in, in Sofia, I guess, but this, this kind of thing, right? And the whole idea is you get from point A to point B, but then the car is sort of like able to, uh, like as a hardware resource, to, to take other people to other places. So it's not wasted hardware resource, okay? Um, so this is basically um, like in, in a nutshell. So yes, let me repeat this, that there is this no magic switch to turn threads you currently have into virtual threads. You have to go and manually into your, into your source code and do like this. 
uh, if you have runnable, you can just make a virtual thread and start it. We have a nice builder now since Java 21. Uh, if you can even start it instantly if you don't need any like name or, or thread group or whatever. You can have, like, if you need executors, you can have new virtual thread per task executor, and this is important per task. This is like a hint. And if you need a factory, this is how you make a factory of virtual threads. Okay, cool. So some frameworks allow easy switch to virtual threads, uh, like uh, Quarkus or Spring. The thing is, they know sort of where to use it. They don't use it everywhere, right? So they will not switch in every possible uh, place. Uh, and yes, that's this. Virtual threads will not magically squeeze more juice out of your CPU. It's just like it's like with taxis, okay? Let's pretend that taxi drivers are obeying uh, road uh, laws, like road or traffic regulations, okay? So just because you're, you're taking a taxi from point A to point B, it doesn't mean it will take you faster than if you were driving yourself, okay? Because there's still the same speed limit, 50 kilometers, there's still like traffic lights and whatnot, okay? It's just after you pay the taxi driver, the taxi can take other people, other passengers. That's the, the difference, but it's not going faster while you are like, in, during this uh, trip, right? But your application will scale better, meaning that more people will be used to uh, or can use this, uh, these uh, taxis. Uh, so what we shouldn't be doing with virtual threads, uh, my friends, we shouldn't be reusing them because they are so small and so cheap and so fast to create, we don't reuse them. Therefore, we also don't pull them. So if you have this pullman solution to handle back pressure or, or flow control, or whatever business term you're using, you shouldn't be you pulling virtual threads to have the same effect. And other thing you should be doing this is you shouldn't be pinning virtual threads. Um, what does it mean to pin a virtual thread? It's like this. We all know this uh, cheap class B Hollywood movies, right? When uh, they try to rob a bank. So they get uh, like uh, their car and the, 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 the driver, right? And the driver stays in the car and the, uh, and the lead gangster says, keep the engine running. We all this movie, right? Okay, yeah. So they say, keep the engine running, right? And then they're going to rob the bank, okay? And then they get out in a hurry, right? And the engine is running and, and, and then they like um, uh, drive away very, very fast. This is what not maybe, I mean, you're not robbing banks. Usually this, it's the other way around. I mean, they're robbing us, but that's another story for another talk. Um, so you don't do this when you're going to, like, say, have a lovely dinner with, uh, with your partner, right? Or with your family, okay? You just tell the taxi driver, bye-bye, I'll call you when I need, right? So it's not waiting for you and the engine is not running. I mean, in theory, you can tell the driver, stay here, and then you need to pay for this. Okay, but we don't want to pay for this. That's why we sort of release uh, the, the taxi. So pinning is basically doing the same thing in the, in the JVM world. Just telling the, the thread, keep the engine running. Because virtual thread is like a passenger, right, in, in a taxi. And a taxi still has to be like a real platform uh, or slash operating thread, um, uh, thread. Oh, sorry, operating system thread, right? Um, so when pinning happens, currently it happens in two situations. First, when you're calling uh, I.O. In, um, uh, in a synchronized block of code or when you're calling a native operation in a synchronized code, right? I mean, th there's work uh, being done. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see in the future that synchronized things don't pin, but currently they do pin, okay? Um, so how do you trace that? How do you verify you're not pinning virtual threads? There's this thing. So you can go for this uh, GDK trace uh, pinned uh, threads equals full, full, full. What gives you full is the full stack trace, right? We're exactly showing here your pinning virtual threads, or you can listen for JFR events. And I have like this little demo just to, so let's say you have this legacy system, okay? And you want to switch to virtual threads in a microservice, okay? And now you need to verify because it's like, of course, it's like your precious system. It's not like a big ball of mud, right? Um, like created by generations of developers, but let's say, it is this big battle of mud. And how do you verify it? How do you test it? So we have this searcher uh, client that's going to search for things. In our example, it's going to search for books. And what's the best technology to search for? I mean, to use to when you're searching for? Someone said Elastic, but it's too many people. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my KPIs go. 
Okay. Yes. So uh, we're going we're gonna to have books indexed in Elasticsearch. And how do you normally do this? You have make a REST call, right? Um, and then um, uh, you, you, you have the results because you're like searching for the books. And what you can do to make sure that you're not pinning or pinning, depending on your mindset, virtual threats is this. Because the spinning happens when this, if I'm not mistaken, if you're waiting uh, where the car is idle for 20 milliseconds. So when you do the, do the test like this, like in your local CI, this is going to be like an instant response. But in production, we don't have instant responses. So we need to make sure that this takes at least 20 milliseconds. So how can we do that? Who knows Toxiproxy? So Toxiproxy is a great um, piece of, of technology that allows you some chaos engineering. So basically, in this case, I can say I want this network uh, basically to have more or less half a second delay. And now setting this up, I mean, everything together manually can take some time, can be tedious and whatnot. So hopefully you've been to Michal's session and you know that you can use test containers for this because this is what I'll be doing, right? I'll be running stuff in test containers. Um, yes, so I have this uh, now. I need to cool, switch here. Um, and uh, where is it? Where is this demo? So I have this, uh, this test because in tests we trust, right? Uh, and I'll be, uh, what the test is doing, it's doing like this. I'll be creating this artifact, basically .jar file, right? I'll be creating this intoxicated network and I'll be running also Elasticsearch in test containers. I'll be spinning up three test containers. Therefore, I have one, two, and three containers, right? And so first I need to create this artifact, okay? put it into this test container, then I need to create this whole setup, these th three things uh, running uh, at the same time, and then I tell this thing, hey, make these calls to make sure you're not pinning virtual threats, or you're pinning virtual threats. Uh, right, so this is it. So I create the network, uh, and uh, this is how I can prime Elasticsearch with, with data. So I basically have this uh, here in resources, uh, I have this uh, this file, so this works as it can work as an equivalent of like a, let's say the SQL dump, right? Um, and I this is my um, the the artifact I'll be putting into a test container, uh, right? And it has to exist, uh, of course. And here I am creating. Maybe let me go it like this. Yes, I'm creating uh, these these three um, containers. So normally I don't recommend this approach disabling um, SSL but because we're gonna to proxy it and as you know like proxying SSL not easy stuff so just uh, and we are not after this so this time I do an exception I uh, disable security right don't do that in prod um, yes and I start Elasticsearch with this data to initialize and I start toxy proxy and I start my container and it to th in this container I will put the my artifact as a TMP test right I'll start them all concurrently, or in parallel, shall I say. And then this is like a, an ugly call to basically tell Elasticsearch or search to Elasticsearch this file I copied there. Why I prefer to do it this way? Because if you have like your system running in Python, Go, uh, uh, Node.js or whatever, you can still use curl because it's part of the container, right? I could, use, I could have used Java client for this. I mean, Elastics uh, Java client. And then I create this network, right? I say half a second plus minus 50 uh, milliseconds, right? And then I'm trying to tell, hey, run this thing for me. Make sure you're calling this thing and tra uh, trace pinned uh, threads. And it should do 20 calls because this is my business logic, right? Due to whatever reason. And then I expect that in the standard output from this program, there is no unpinned, okay? So as you can see, we had some really experienced people working on this test because this test is probably passing because it got disabled. Right, uh, so this is how you fix like failing builds, of course, right? Disabled tests, that really. And as you can see, the test is green, so maybe we should be running it. Or maybe let's run it and let's see what is going to happen. And, um, and, uh, well, it needs to start, of course, these containers. I'm not reusing them for this case, as far as I can tell. So, uh, do we have some results? Okay, Elasticsearch started, this thing started, and it's still working. Um, okay. Yes, okay. So, as I was hoping for, it failed. 
right? This is the, the failure is what I was looking for. And it's like this, this output is quite cryptic. So what I can do, maybe is, this is the beauty of test containers, right? So you can go and basically, like in this cheap American gangster movie, you can shout like everybody freeze. So here I can just go and put like a breakpoint and let me rerun the thing. Uh, hopefully no pulling images this time. Uh, yes, any bad jokes, anyone? We have time. I mean, this integration test is always slow, don't you know this? I mean, in this very case, yes, because I'm doing the, the dummiest uh, possible integration test, but what we, get, what we see here, right, this is it. So as you can see, I have this result here, and let me view it, and will it work? Will it work like this? Yes. So see, because I, I'm pinning virtual threads, this is what I get in the output, and this is the beauty of it. You scroll, you scroll, and it says here, kaboom. This is when you tell the driver, keep the engine running. Okay, and you want to do, don't want to do this. So we got for book searcher Java line 54. Okay, this is where we shall go then. Uh, so let's go to uh, book, sorry, not B, book searcher, which line was it? 54, right? Um, and so here, uh, as you can see, yes, I'm calling this search because I have this uh, REST high level client search. So this is where it, I'm pinning virtual threads because I'm doing IO call and the method is synchronized. And you don't actually see this because I dip, like, disabled the deprecated um, uh, warnings, but this is, I mean, there are two reasons. So reason number one is because it's synchronized, right? Uh, like, uh, where was it? Uh, because it's synchronized. And the other thing, this is an old deprecated client, which is easy to like uh, block. So first thing you can do is like uh, you can uh, get rid of the synchronized. If you really need to like be synchronizing, you should go for like uh, I don't know other means, uh, right? Uh, not just use uh, synchronized. There's I'm, I'm sure there's something in Java concurrent for you, okay? For your use case. If it's not, there are also like external libraries. Anyways, what I'm gonna do here, I'm, I need to like recreate my uh, the artifact, of course, without tests because I'm going to be testing them in, an, in the next step. And now let me rerun um, this, uh, this test. So now when I rerun it, uh, hopefully I won't see this unpinned. Uh, so quick question, do you know why did we call medieval times dark times or dark ages? Because they had a lot of nights. Okay, anyways. Uh, bad jokes are also my specialty. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, so as you can see, there is no unpinned in this output. So let me proceed with this test. And yay, great success. It's green, right? Now this test is passing. So one approach is when I'm using like uh, an old technology is to make sure I'm, I'm synchronizing like without synchronized. Or the other approach is like I was like I can show you in here is basically in, you can use this uh, modern um, Elasticsearch client like this uh, this thing and it's not blocking even if you call it from within a synchronized uh, method or, or call right maybe we'll skip this test why is this the case because it's using its own thread pool so the passenger is taken from the taxi right or Uber and put into another car and it therefore it's not blocking virtual thread so there are two solutions to this problem. First, update your dependencies. Chances are they are not blocking, right? And if you can't, then uh, make sure you synchronize uh, using different ways. Or, uh, I mean, Gunnar Moling is not with us uh, here today, but there's also like, if you can go, maybe it's uh, better to go for uh, his uh, library. I mean, he and, and friends called the JFR unit. Where is it? Yes, it's here, right? And using this, Library, you can actually check uh, for uh, JFR events in your test. So basically, if I do a similar call, then I can basically check for these events, right, if they happen during the test, and make sure there are none events of this type, right? So this is another approach you can take to make sure that you're not butchering virtual uh, threats. Okay, uh, let me show, make sure that we are, we are stopped and even bring this to like a pristine state. Uh, where is Git? Um, how's it called, rollback, not rebase, not good, get, get push forward, force, okay, maybe let me just go for like a shortcut, yes, cool, 
So this is my friend's pinning, and there are more nasty things you can do. If you want to read this about this, I recommend you go to my uh, blog page because I wrote about this, uh, testing if there are no pinned virtual threads. Um, how many lights are there in this room? Four or five? Do you recognize this? Like, when you look, it looks different. When you don't look, it looks different. But how do you know if you're not looking? Like quantum physics and stuff? Sorry? Uh, uh, yeah, and this stuff. Yes, exactly. So there's another thing. Maybe we shouldn't be looking at virtual threads or less. So basically, let's go quickly for another, uh, for another demo. This is it. <coughs> Let me go quickly with you through this uh, demo. Oh, hold on. My mouse is just slipping down. So you've been given this task, this, this lovely task by your boss that you need to do as many tasks as you can. So what you can do, basically, you have this thing written or you, you try. It's the, it, finally, it's time to try parallel uh, streams in Java. I mean, after so many years. OK, so what you do, you like over here to make sure I'm not interfering I'm creating yet another uh, platform thread and I have tasks to do and I'll be doing this task in, in tasks in parallel from zero to 100 uh, and for each of them I'll be doing this uh, very uh, I mean this handling and this hard work which is like taking five seconds basically right so if 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 doing one task task takes five seconds and the whole program it will be running for six seconds question is how many tasks will I be able to complete someone said one can I get two can I get five can I get 400? Yes, this is the, for great answers like this, because the answer was it depends on how big the fog joint pool is. I brought some Polish jellies. There you go. Exactly. So th this is it. You go for H top, and this might be a hint. I should have 12 cores in my machine, right? So how many tasks should I be able to come to finish? Let's just see, right? So that should be in five, four, three, two, one. And yeah, we finished 12 and started another 12 tasks. Makes sense. So now your boss tells you, OK, we need to go uh, faster, harder, uh, deeper, like a new scooter, whatever. Uh, right. Uh, so what you do, of course, you just uh, do the um, copy paste method, right? Uh, and you do like this, so now we'll be handling from 100 to 200, right? Another parallel stream and so on. How many tasks will I complete this time? 12, I've heard. Can I get more? Can I get less? Maybe we have conge congestion, we don't know. Okay, let's run this thing. So I have like both, and actually we finished and we have 13. I'm really good at butchering threads, you see. Yes. Uh, and it's because we have this, uh, this one uh, thread, this one other thread, and apparently it's not so much CPU bound and whatnot. Like, anyway, we, we don't get 24, right? So then you, your boss tells you, we need to try this new thing. Maybe we'll, the whole thing will run faster, right? Uh, using virtual threads. So we roll this thing back and we go for virtual threads. So we go like zip, right? And then we just have a good old loop and we'll start task from 100 to 200 and just handle the task in a virtual thread. Question, how many tasks will I complete this time? Zero. I love your optimism. <laughs> and yes, 12 tasks. Because as you can see, I'm still running for joint pool. This work, so the fun fact is this Taxis belong to a company called Fork Joint Pool. Okay? And we cannot create as many taxis as we have. This is pretty much like in New York. Um, anyway, so the boss tells you, okay, we have to investigate why it really takes five seconds. Maybe it should be something faster because I have artificially like hard coded five, se five seconds, but normally this is not how you uh, do with, uh, your work, right? So instead of going this hard work uh, for, um, for five seconds, what I'm gonna do, it's like, do you know this debug one, debug two, and so on? Of course you do, don't cheat me. 
right? Of course. So this is what we do, debug one, debug two, and we, so we do what? debug one, one second, debug two, one second, right? And how the reporting looks like, I'm going to do a fine logging, as you can see, using uh, uh, Java logging. So I'm going here, and just I need to enable this. I need to say that this level is like a fine level, right? So now, how many tasks will be able to complete? 10. 100, someone said. Honestly, I don't know. Really, because you never know. Uh, let's see how many times, how many tasks we'll have uh, this time. And it's this time we finished six. Very nice. Progress, right? <laughs> okay, let me, let me rerun it. And we'll see next time how many times we'll get, or oh, tasks, sorry. And this time we will get two. Progress, clear progress, my friends. Yes, the, the project is, is heading right direction. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there, come on. Any ideas what's happening? As an idea, maybe there's something around synchronization. Ta ta task switching, yes, we're getting closer. Why are we switching tasks? Uh, jealous for you, sorry. Why does it happen? It's because, my dear friends, when we go here, let's do this false experiment. What happens here? I.O. Exactly. What happens here is I.O., right? So the, I should have switched here to asynchronous logger. So I tell another thread to do the I.O. on my behalf, right? It's like this situation, uh, more or less. So you went to a, like a big concert or like big game in a stadium, right? With a taxi. And now the, 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 the concert is finished and everybody, everybody wants to call a taxi. Okay? And now the question is, Will the taxi serve you first because you came there to the stadium with a taxi or not? I mean, it may depend on the taxi company, right? But this company doesn't give a damn. All right? So uh, when you want to talk, call a taxi again, they don't care if you were using virtual thread before or not, right? So uh, long story short, what you should be doing is like, either do this uh, like in a synchronous way or like monitor the progress in some other means, right? Uh, this is what we should be uh, doing, basically. Um, I'm rushing, sorry, because I, I'm rushing. I have another talk today uh, at, at our meetup. So yes, structured concurrency. Why isn't it full screen? Okay, now it is. is uh, do we have any JavaScript friends in the room? Don't be shy. Yeah, sort of full style. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in Java, as you, as you know, we don't have this. Um, sorry, this uh, this idiom like um, uh, await, right? Uh, async await. So with structure and concurrency, we should have now something resembling this mechanism, and it should help us to eliminate thread leaks uh, and cancellation delays. And for now, at least, we shouldn't be replacing interruption with cancellation. So for now, thread interrupt and interrupted and so on stays, right? But we can have another mechanism for our uh, stuff. Let me go for, uh, for a demo again, because in code we trust. I mean, code is always better than just slides. I mean, slides can take everything, but code, oh, that's another story. Uh, and that should be here. Okay, uh, sorry, wrong key. Now I need to do this combo. Okay, so we have something like this. Imagine we are at this stadium and we have some competition, right? And uh, there are two systems. One system can tell you the ident identificator and the name of the participant. Another system can give you like ID of the user and, for example, the current score. And you need to have, like, on this big screen, display that Johnny 200, Susan 250, and so on. So what you need to do is you need to call one service, get the names with IDs, and then call another service and get the score with IDs, right? And then you combine the results and refresh the scoreboard, okay? So this is what we're doing. And, of course, the first approach, the first, like, uh, initial 
uh, attempt is to have this thing sequential. So I'm calling name service, I'm calling score service. This takes a second, this takes, takes a second. I combine the results. So if I do it like this, how long this algorithm is going to take? Two seconds. Someone said two seconds, it was you, right? So I'm jealous. Very good math. One plus one equals two. Yes. Well, sometimes it's not that simple. Come on. Yes. So 200s, as you can see, Krzysztof 300, Susan 100, and Joe 100 as well. And then, of course, your boss comes and says, OK, why actually are we doing it like this? Can we just outreach, grab both, and combine? And you say, sure I can in no time, boss, right? And you like open your, uh, your book, and that was speaking about future of Java, and you go for what? For futures, right? So I have the uh, executors. I mean, this thing is like already using the virtual thread executor, but this could be like a regular uh, executor, right? And we submit um, uh, one thing, one call, we submit another call, right? And then when we get the results here, basically we wait till the results here, wait till the results here, and then we combine. So the question is, how long is this going to take? One second. I've called, come on, I'm, I'm butchering threads, but not that much. I mean, come on. One second. Because this takes one second, this takes one, takes one second. They happen at the same time, right? Uh, but I'm waiting here one second, and this more or less is instantly ready here, right? That's why I combined this, so this is the, the overhead. That's why it took... By the way, this is not how you do benchmarks, okay? This is just like a, you know stupid, fancy demo engineering. No benchmarks this way, okay? Thank you. Thing is, what happens if things go south, right, as they say in America, or where they break? What happens if I, for example, let's say, as you can see, this is how I emulate, that it takes one second. Like, after one second, for example, the data cannot get back to us over the network, because the network went so how long is it going to take before we know there's uh, something wrong? I can't hear you, sorry, but it takes one second. Okay, so now let's stay with this Schrodinger experiment. Uh, and what happens if getting names fails instantly? How long will we wait before we see oopsies? Again, one second. Two seconds, someone said. No. Again, one second. Why one second? Because, uh, because we are not Kotlin developers. Yes, that's the answer. Not using coroutines. Um, but the thing is basically this. When this call fails, it doesn't notify this other fa call that, hey, you know, I failed. There's no need for you to wait. Just quit. Cancel what you're doing, right? Finish your beer and go home. This is not happening. So what we would need to do using uh, completable futures, like one future would need to subscribe to another future and another to the first one, so they notify each other when the thing uh, doesn't work, right? So they cancel each, each, each other, basically. And it's doable when you have just two. With three, you get six connections. With four, you get, hey, you're good at math. Exactly. It's like, no, 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 I don't want to be there. Very good. Yes. I, I love the spirit. Yes. I mean, this attitude. Um, uh, yes. So we're not going to do this thing. So what, we, what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to go for this new fancy thing called structured concurrency. Uh, so it's too much scrolling. Uh, so yes, instead of this, I'm going to go here. And what it's doing, it's, it looks like something similar. It's now instead of like executor service, right? I have the structured task soap shutdown failure, which means if this thing fails, it should shut down the whole, every fork of it. So logically, we divide our task into subtasks that can happen uh, in parallel at the same time, and they should be happening at the same time. So I have no, I have no error this time. How long will it take? Zero? No, it, it, it doesn't give <laughs> Come on. It will take us one second. Now the thing is, if it, if it fails here, right, like this, how long will it take? Almost no time. 
You wanted to answer this? Okay. So I have jealous for you. I mean, say. <laughs> yes. Okay. I was too quick. Sorry. Yes. So this is the benefit of the cancellation that we get from structured concurrency. That is, as long as we do the thing properly. Because, let's say, uh, you see, I'm using here again, I'm cheating. I'm using thread slip. And as you can see, it's there is interrupted handling. I mean, it's a poor man's solution, but at least there is something. How about instead of this, I will go this, so I have this hard work. So now, how long will it take? One second, someone said. Sorry, I'm out of jellies. I have only like a, yeah, but that's the correct answer. Why? Because this guy doesn't care about being interrupted or not it will always work for one second. So that means if you want to have your things to be cancelable, I, I hope that's the proper English, uh, then you need to make sure they, observed, they observe interruptions, right? When we rerun this thing now, see it's back to no time. So this is the story, right? Basically out of this example. Um, and we get the free cancellation within the, the, the whole tree of this uh, uh, scope task, right? And we can also have shutdown on success. Shutdown on success is basically when you have two calls, whenever the first one appears uh, successfully back, meaning no exception, we cancel the other ones, right? For example, you have like a, like a slow database and fast cache. If the cache, uh, we, if we have cache hit, we can cancel the database thingy, right? Uh, we, we can't forget join or join until, but the compiler will tell you, so no worry, compiler is the best buddy, but that works as long as, it's, as the as subtasks are interruptible. If we make the subtasks not interruptible, we have no cancellation. Okay? So this is how you batch your structured concurrency. And by the way, all these subtasks in structured concurrency are uh, running using virtual threads. Right? Yes. And we get to the last part, which is scope values. Like, who has ever been, okay, they're recording me, they're not recording you, okay? Who has ever been to this situation that you go, go to your work on Monday and there is a, a ticket in Jira or another issue tracker and it says that customer A of your bank or your system suddenly saw, let's say, bank statements of, or cus of customer B? You don't have, to, uh, people are like, mm -hmm. we've all been in this situation, okay, you're brave, yes. I mean, we've, maybe not all of us, but many of us have been into this situation. And why? It's because there are two problems in IT, right? Naming things, cache invalidation, and off by one errors. Uh, so this is cache invalidation. Thread local is cache invalidation, basically. So when the, when the thread exited somehow in a weird way, we forgot to clear this thread local. So it still had the ID of the original user. So when the task was handling uh, sorry, the thread was handing the task for this another user, right? Uh, the thread, okay, I know the user. I mean, I'll go to the database, fetch the records and whatnot, right? Only it was a different user, logically. So what we want to have is one-way immutable thread locals which have bounded lifetime, and this is visible in code, right? So you don't have to spend two weeks like debugging or going through logs. And therefore, we get simplified reasoning and hopefully improved performance because when you have one million virtual threads, and each of them would have a copy, its own copy in a thread local, we would have one million copies. Quite costly, I would say. Therefore, it's better to have just one thing, and to make sure it doesn't like break, it has to be read-only, right? Nothing changes to thread local, as far as I can tell. Right now, it's not deprecated in certain scenarios. It's still a valid uh, uh, use case, right? And how does it work is more or less like this. Let's go for the last demo of today. Um, let me, yeah, roll back and it should be here, scope values, and that's it. Okay, now, see, uh, okay, it's just warning me I'm using uh, preview features, so let's ignore the, 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 this, like, yellowish color. Okay, how many Star Wars files have, do we have in this room? Okay, the demo is going to be about Star Trek, sorry. Yes. So we are traveling. We have a level. This level should come, for example, from HTTP request, from a, from a token or something. Basically, you have certain access level. And we are traveling 
uh, from 70,000 light years away, right across the galaxy in the spaceship called Voyager, right? And we have different people. And of course, we have like prisoners in brig. We have captains and, and lieutenants or whatever ranks we have, right? And the ranks have different clearance levels. I mean, they can do different stuff on Voyager. And what is this stuff? So I can turn lights on and off. And as you can see, I'm using this uh, structured concurrency, right? And I can always turn lights on and off. We are not KGB. We don't torture people with light, OK? Um, so you, we can also locate where there are other crew members, right? So, but for this, I need to have like a clearance level of at least two, OK? And this is extremely dummy code because I'm using just integers, right? Not like my domain code. So don't do it like this, I, I guess. And then we can also block bridge controls. Uh, and for this, I need to be at least captain. Again, bad code, magic value. Don't do it at home. Okay? Uh, but yeah, this is what happens. Uh, so um, basically, I'm doing some stuff, and then someone says, oh, you should go to jail because something, something. So here we go to jail. This is a nested, nested scope, like a Matryoshka doll style, okay? Uh, like doll in a doll. Uh, and we set here the level for a prisoner. And after, like, we said, oh, no, no, you're innocent, we quit this scope, this run scope, and then, hopefully, we shall get the same level as we had here, okay? So let me run this code for you. And it seems this is the case, right? So I have security level, uh, clearance level 2, which means I can turn lights on and off. I cannot block bridge controls, but I can locate Commander Tuvok. He's on deck 4 which means when I'm in a jail, I can only turn lights on. And then when I'm back from the jail, I'm released. I'm I have, again, this level two, my original level, right? I didn't get demoted. And I can, again, like locate Commander Tuvok. He was teleported to deck 10. Uh, but I'm still not a captain. I cannot block uh, bridge controls, right? The funny thing start to happen if we do what? If this thing starts to be mutable, OK? So now let me just quickly go for uh, and apply this because typing would be uh, too much time. So now instead of integer, I use atomic integer, okay? And atomic integer is a mutable thing, uh, and therefore we get like a weird stuff, uh, basically like uh, here get set, see? And this is this is this 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 malicious code we have, and this is like a get get. It should all already tell you there's something wrong about the code. Now when we rerun it, what happens is this. I was assigned security level 5. I can turn lights on, but suddenly I am able to block bridge controls. And I can tell that Commander Tuvok is on deck 11. And when I'm in the jail and should have level 0, I can turn the lights on, okay, but I can block controls and can still locate people. And when I'm out of the jail, suddenly I have level 50. Right? And it's it's, it's kind of like, it's not exactly the same, but it's kind of like you, you're making or you're asking yourself for a lock for shell situation, okay? Because this darn thing suddenly is mutable uh, here, right? Every uh, junior or every intern that can touch this code can suddenly mutate the whole thing. And therefore, things no longer work as intended, right? Because scoped values should be used with uh, immutable things. So... Yes, they work nicely with structured concurrency. Uh, you can use run or call. And these words can be nested as matryoshka, right? But this work as long as you don't mutate the darn thing. So, dear friends, how can we batch of virtual threads and company? We use virtual threads mainly for CPU heavy tasks, OK? We can swarm tasks without any flow control. Um, we can ignore unmounting for I.O. Uh, we can pull, reuse, and mix virtual threads with synchronized and native calls. Uh, we can ignore interruptions, of course. Um, we can mutate scope values. And I sincerely hope you don't do this, okay? Please don't. <laughs> Please don't do this. What I would ask you to do is if you want to tell me what you like or what you didn't like about this presentation, please go to this uh, quick anonymous uh, survey, uh, this thing. And you can tell me what was OK, what wasn't OK. It should take you like 30 seconds, maybe two minutes if you're like a writer, uh, right? I would appreciate any, any feedback from you. 
Um, or you can use, of course, the conference uh, form. If you're watching this on YouTube, I will also like take a look every now and then. So please, like, don't hesitate and, and let me know. Okay. Uh, if you fancy to follow me for more dad jokes or pool life advices, please do on, on Twitter, Mastodon, LinkedIn, whatever. Um, yes, these are the slides for you. So the, if you want to take one picture of this whole presentation, this is the picture. In three, two, one. Okay, people still taking pictures. Okay, okay, let's wait a bit more because here's also the code for you on this slide, uh, Bagadoria. <laughs>